see it clearly now There's a reason for this sound It's Jesus At the core of who I am Is the risen son of man It's Jesus Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Stretch your hands out to the tithes and offerings. Come on, ushers. It's way too much hugging and love going on at the back there. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this time of worshiping you with our tithes and our offerings. We thank you for the opportunity of engaging in covenant relationship like what Abraham did. And we thank you that the lesser is blessed by the greater as we honor you. Lord Jesus, even as you received the tithes from Abraham, thank you that we, the children of Abraham, continue to worship you, to honor you, and to receive the blessing, even upon the promises that we are holding on to in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, so we are busy, we've busy launched, we've just launched the um, beginnings of our teachings on healing. Say healing. healing. Amen. And we are busy laying a foundation. Who best to go to than Dr. Luke in the Bible? And we started last week. If you did not get last week's teaching, I want to tell you, it was outrageous, um, incredible, I had so many people so blessed, so touched, so changed uh, by the power of the word last week. Um, go on to the live stream and watch it. I would really uh, encourage you to do so because there's a continuity. There's a foundation that needs to be built. If you, t if you build a house as wonderful as the house is on a weak foundation, you're going to find that that, found, uh, that that house is going to start to find, you're going to find some cracks, and it's going to, one side's going to sink. Amen. We don't want anything sinking down. Amen. So glad you're all excited about that. So um, 
this friend of mine, uh, uh, who's really quite a funny guy, he's, he's ministered for us before. Isn't it true that in scary movies, uh, when somebody's in the house, the person who owns the house goes, hello? Like, he, like somebody's going to answer and say, yes, I'm in the kitchen. Would you like a sandwich? You know? So he wrote this down. I thought it was funny. You had to be there. Anyway, okay. So last week we talked about the temptations that Jesus went through uh, uh, in, in the wilderness, in Luke chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, Luke chapter 4. And so we're going to go into Luke chapter 4, and I want us to see some... We need to understand that Luke was, a, uh, he was an educated man. The only book in the Bible that's chronologically written. You know what chronological means? It means it's written in the right time. This happened and then a day or two later this happened or at some time later that happened. It, it, it was the only one written chronologically. Matthew wasn't chronological for him. Three years, he just, well, around about that time this happened. And, and Mark, of course... For those of you that are scholars here, I'm throwing this in. Uh, Mark never followed Jesus. Mark actually is hearing Peter preach, and he's writing down. So Matthew followed Jesus. Uh, Luke followed Jesus. And John, of course, was very close to Jesus. Amen? Mark is hearing Peter speak, and he's taking notes. That's why it's not chronological, because Peter's excited. And then this happened, and then that happened. But it wasn't necessarily in order. Whereas uh, Dr. Luke, he's, 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 he's educated, he's very chronological, he has studied up, he's, he, he knows how to get things done chronologically. So here we see the three temptations that Jesus went through, the three, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. We see all uh, 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 the lust of the flesh. We see those as Jesus had to overcome those things. Why? Because all three of those were involved in the Garden of Eden. All three of those were what the enemy used to bring man down, and Jesus had to come and overcome the enemy with all those three uh, temptations. Do we understand this? And so... He does this, and the Bible says that he went into the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit. That's why we always encourage people when we go into a time of fasting to go full of the Holy Spirit. Don't go in and you're all discouraged and you're falling apart. It's ne never a good time. You need to go in full of the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible says he, he goes through all that, overcomes the enemy, and Look at verse 14, which is where we pick up our teaching, because we're going chronologically through the book of Luke. We're doing an expository preaching. This is called expository preaching, which means we're exposing what is in the Word of God so we can be taught and fed and encouraged in our faith. Amen? Unless the Lord breaks into this, this is what the Lord told me to do. Amen? In general, I just... I, I, as I spend time with God, he's just throwing revelation and stuff into, into me. But this is what he told me to do as we prepare and go into our two months of healing. Now, also, we have, are going to have our healing uh, uh, um, evenings on Wednesday nights from 6 to 7, from three weeks' time, I think it starts. Um, but we will be sending you texts as you have received to prepare you. So you can come to that, and from 6 to 7, and from 7 to 8.30, you go straight into Bible study, and we continue teaching on healing. Amen? It's going to be a powerful month of healing. How many of us know that this is an important thing for us to know? Not just to know here, but to, for us to experience. Amen? So verse 14, and Jesus returned, watch this, you remember what we said, he went in, in the, in the uh, full of the Holy Spirit. Here in verse 14, he comes out of that time of temptation in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Then he comes to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as the custom was, he goes into, the, into church, he goes to synagogue. Say with me, as the custom was. 
we need to become a little more committed and dedicated to go to God's house. Amen? Like what Jesus, if Jesus thought it was good, if it was good for Jesus, it should be good for us, right? And so it says, um, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered to him the book of Isaiah, Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is where we pick up our teaching this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down. Can you imagine you could hear a pin drop? It's like, that's it? What are you saying by not saying anything? What are you saying by just sitting down? They're all looking at him. All of a sudden, he says, in the Greek, it's one word. Today, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. You can imagine the religious people were freaking out. We need to understand what was actually said here. We just read it and it just, you know, you turn to the person next to you and say, are you ready for a revy? Revi is my short word for revelation. Revelation is the Greek word apocalypto. It doesn't mean something new that Pastor Errol sat in the week and made up. It means it was always there and all we're doing is we're uncovering it. So you can see what was always there. Amen. I don't go thinking, let me make something up so it can really sound cool. That's not cool. That is heresy. That is, judgment will fall on me, and I'm not good with that. Revelation is, it was always there, it was covered, and we're uncovering it. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because He has anointed me. Say, anointed me. This word anointed in the Greek, it's the Greek word chrio. Like you're clearing a throat. Chrio. And it literally means to somebody taking oil. They would take oil and they would smear it on the person. And the Holy Spirit, in this case, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for He has anointed me. That word anointed means He has appointed me and He has empowered me for The calling that he has placed upon my life. You see, with the anointing, it's a a calling into office. It's a appointing you to fulfill a purpose. It's appointing you to fulfill the call of God on your life. So a lot of people, when they have the, the goosebumps or the shakes or the laughter, or whatever, they think that's what the anointing is for. The anointing, that is maybe the effects of the anointing. But if you're not fulfilling the call of God for your life, you're actually being disobedient to the anointing. Because the anointing comes with purpose. There's a reason for the anointing. Look what it says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because... Say because. Yeah, because would ask the question why. So one would ask, why error? Say it, but use your name. Why, don't say why error. Say why your name, okay? Say your name all together. The because are answers why Carol? Why Christian? The because would answer, why Richard? Why Doug? That's what the because would answer. Why? Because I've appointed him, her, to do this, 
and I've empowered them with the necessary power and anointing authority to fulfill what the, the, the why, the because. Amen? The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because He has anointed me, He has chriot me, He has empowered me to preach the gospel to the poor. How many of you are excited about that? I've got good news and I've got good news. That word preach is not right. The next word preach is the right word preach. This first word preach is a different Greek word. Ah, aren't you glad you came to church this morning? This first word, um, preach the gospel to the poor, is the Greek word sintrivo. Say with me, sintrivo. To preach the gospel, sintrivo. Sintrivo, watch this now. Are you ready for the revelation? He's anointed me to sintrivo. The normal word for the word preach, it's the Greek word keruso. It means to preach, to proclaim, to announce. Amen. This is a whole different word. This word is the Greek word sintrivo, and it means to break into pieces. To crush, to, do, to, to break it up. So he's breaking into the law, the results of the law, sin, a world lived by sin, and where man is trying to uh, uh, fulfill his uh, uh, righteousness by his own works. I've come to break and destroy with the gospel... Watch this now, to, to bring that to the poor. Now that doesn't mean, it's the Greek word tochos, but, which means poor or beggarly. But look, if you look at the context, people without Jesus are beggars, poor, useless. We can do nothing without our Jesus. And he's saying, listen, the gospel, the light that I'm bringing, the life that I'm bringing, by breaking and destroying that, that's, the, that's what's going to take you out of your, your horrible poverty that you're in. Your poverty of relationship with God. you disconnected from life. You are of all creatures poor. So I've come to break, to break in, to destroy that using the gospel. And we're going to preach it to the poor. Sintrivo. What a powerful word. I looked up this word sintrivo in the, in the Greek. It means to break in pieces, to tread down. Watch this now. To put Satan underfoot. Remember, this, remember the prophecy? You will, he, he, you will bruise his head and he will crush your skull. Sin tribo. Jesus is saying, listen, I've come to do what was prophesied in Genesis. To crush your head. Put it under my feet. When we understand this, when we say, God anoint me, you need to understand what you're saying. You need to understand what that, what's the gravity and the responsibility and the power and the authority that goes with that anointing. Because it's just these days, oh, I, I got an anointing in church today. Oh, really? What happened? Oh, my God, just got goosebumps all over. Okay? And? No, that was it. No, that wasn't it. Your flesh responded with goosebumps or shaking or whatever. But what did the Lord say to you? How did it change your life? How did it give you vision? How did it change your, your motivation, your, 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 your love for life? What happened inside of you? What vision did the Lord download into you? 
Because that's what the anointing does. It means, it also means to break down, to crush, to, to shatter the strength of something. He shattered the strength of the law that none of us could keep and that we need to come to an end in ourselves that we can do this without Jesus. Because we can't. How about you? We cannot do this without Jesus. And so the anointing of God comes to break, to shatter, to sintrivo, to, to break in, to destroy that, to bring the gospel, to bring light into darkness, to, that we can preach that to every poor, poverty-stricken person. I'm not talking about money. They can have all the money in the world and still be poverty-stricken. Amen? That's what, the, that's what the anointing is about. Turn to the person next to you and say, aren't you glad we can, we can now uh, uh, read and understand Greek? Hallelujah. So, the word preach is the Greek word keruso or kirikso. Say kirikso. It means to be a herald, to officiate as a herald, to proclaim after uh, the manner of a herald. Not Errol, Herald, with an H. Always with the suggestion of formally, formality, gravity, and with an authority which must be listened and obeyed. It means to publish. It means to proclaim openly. Amen? Now, watch this now. Keep, let's keep reading. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because He has created me, has anointed me, endured me... For, with a, 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 a power from on high, he has given me authorization to sintrivo the gospel to the, the poor, the poverty-stricken people. He has sent me, interesting Greek word, say sent me. Same Greek word as the Greek word apostle. Apostolos, same Greek word. Apostelo means to, to, to send. Nasustelo, I'm sending you. Apostelo. And he's saying, um, for he has anointed me to, uh, he has sent me, he has sent me his apostelo. So we all, in a sense, have that apostolic calling. Because we are all sent. Watch this now. To heal. There's two Greek words for heal. Are you ready? Those of you that are taking notes, you need to be writing quick. The, the, this one is called iomai. Iomai, and it means to heal and to cure and to make whole. To heal, to cure, to make whole. The connotation of this is that it's an instant healing. There are times there it's, that it's an instant healing, and there are times it's a progressive healing healing. God can do what He wants to do, how He wants to do, and when He wants to do. Amen? Most of the time, this word is not what was used when Jesus healed people. Hard for us to believe, even though there were people that were instantly, immediately they received. Amen? But here, here's the word, so He has aposteloed me, He has sent me to heal, to cure, to make whole. Watch this. The, the what? The brokenhearted. Same Greek word as, remember when Jesus said, he has sent me to preach. Uh, 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 um, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Same Greek word, sintrivo. He has sent me to cure, to heal, to make whole the brokenhearted. Sintrivo, those who have been crushed and those who who your life is in pieces because you've made some wrong choices, because stuff happened, because maybe there was a breakup. Maybe somebody died that you looked up to. There's some people here. I want to minister to those who we all love and loved our precious Pastor Lydia. Yes, I'm going there. Amen? Amen. But some of us have gotten, we stuck like in mud. We cannot move forward 
because she's, she's, she went to be with the Lord. Jesus came to shatter that so that you can still move on. In fact, if she had her choice, especially now that if, if she had her choice in heaven, she wouldn't want you to be stuck. She would want you to be moving forward. So all the stuff that I'm stuck, I'm, I'm destroyed, I'm broken. Firstly, Pastor Lydia wouldn't want that. And secondly, Jesus said he has been anointed to come and to bring sin trivo to the brokenhearted. God wants to heal your broken heart. He wants you to get out that rut of being stuck in the mud because somebody, a loved one, passed away. Because maybe a, 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 a relationship was broken. Maybe there was divorce. Some people get paralyzed emotionally in their minds and in their emotions, and they cannot move on. Jesus came to, to break to pieces the thing that is that has uh, 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 bound you, paralyzed you, that, that which has shattered your life because it was such a dramatic experience. Aren't you glad he, he didn't just die for my sins? That in, that in itself is, is, is uh, awesome. I love him for it, but he did far more. He came to cure, to heal, to make you whole again because of that trauma that happened in your past. Some of us have been traumatized by a situation, a loved one, a child, a sickness that we went through that it was horrific. People who, who didn't and have not recovered emotionally and psychologically because of the traumas of the past. I knew a, one of the most anointed pastors in South Africa. He was doing so well, the church was exploding. And he bought his son for his 21st birthday present. He bought him a BMW 323i. Of course, it's a fast car, especially those days. He's going through the bends in a street that... I, we lived in, there were some lovely bends to throw your car sideways in. He's doing that, obviously, and it was the first day he got his car. You don't do that the first day. You've got to get to know the car a little bit too, right? You shouldn't be doing it at all. Let's just say that. Okay, somebody says, oh, he said you can do it, but as long as not the first day. It's not what I'm saying. But he takes the car and he's throws it into the first bend, and the next bend is right there, and as he throws it in, he loses control, and in that street, there were big, huge oak trees, went straight into the tree and died on impact. The father, the preacher, the pastor was devastated. Any man would be devastated, right? Any man would I went to the funeral and I watched this man bury his own son for the car that he just bought him for his birthday. I wept inside. I, I felt his pain. I didn't know that he would never recover. He had such a powerful anointing upon his life. He was one of the most anointed pastors I knew. He didn't recover. As far as I know, his church went from 800 people. If he gets 30, 40 people, now it's a lot. He just, he, he was just never the same. I don't stand in judgment of him because they go, ah, but by the grace of God, we all need to understand this. Amen. It's not for us to judge anyone because when you, when you're walking in those shoes, it's a little different to standing on the outside and saying, come on, man, pull yourself together. Come, let, get going here. And we need to be sensitive and to be part of the answer instead of part of the judgment, which the enemy always throws at people that are going through that kind of thing. Let's be part of the healing. Let's be part of the, the recovery. Let's be part of the bringing wholeness to the person. Amen? 
Jesus says, I've come to heal, cure, and make whole the brokenhearted or those that are shattered. And then to preach. He has the Greek word, keruso. Now it's the proclamation. Now it's the preaching, like what, like what it says there. To preach, look at this word, deliverance. Here's the Greek word, aphesis. Say aphesis. You'll find that the Greek got it from the Hebrew and the Turks also. They use the same word. It's afet, means forgive me or release me from that. To, the word aphesis means to be released or to be loosed. To be loosed. Aphesis. Watch this now. To preach aphesis to the captives. This word captives, it means captives or prisoners. Some people are in prison. And the anointing of God is there to bring a release, a, a loosing to the prisoners, to those that are in jail. Some people have put, they've gone into jail because somebody else cursed you. And since they cursed you, that curse is actually keeping you in a prison, in a jail, as it were. There's people that are in prison emotionally. You cannot... See, you, you, you cannot be fulfilled by anything. You've tried, you've even had to turn to drugs or what comes out of a bottle to get fulfillment because there's, there's, there's that bondage. There's, I'm in prison. I, there's a hopelessness. I'm never going to get out of this. There's a bondage. And Jesus said, I've come to preach, release, loosing. To all those that are in jail and that are captives. Some people are captives to other people's words. Some people are captives to mistakes they've made themselves. Sometimes we make mistakes and that thing holds me back. Especially us as men. And I want to speak to the men here. We do something and our wives find out. And now we feel like we're second rate. We're not good enough. And we can never rule and be head of our home when we have that oppression, that cloud of guilt and condemnation over us as men. Especially that my wife knows this. How, and in my mind, even though she's forgiven me and, she's still, and she is respecting me, I feel disrespected because I know that she knows what I did or my mistake. Those of us that are married understand this real well. And all the men are real quiet here this morning. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Your wife finds out, she catches you, somehow something happens, somebody tells her something you did, something you said, something happened, and we lose authority. And guess what? She has no choice but to take that place of authority in the home that you're supposed to be taking, and so all the men have abdicated their place as the head of the home because we're living as captives as opposed to living free in Jesus as a man of God who has made mistakes, but he's, been, he's, he, uh, he's gotten back on his feet. Blessed is the man who, who does what? Even though he falls seven times, yet he will rise again. It's not in the falling, it's in the rising again. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm rising again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because the anointing came to heal the brokenhearted, to set at freedom those who are in prison and in captive. In churches today, if we, if we could see into the spirit realm, you would see people in chains. You would see people behind bars, you would see people, if, if we could see the in, uh, physical things in, in the spirit realm, you would see some stuff that's horrific that's going on. You'd look in a church of 5,000 people, 1,000 people, whatever amount of people, and you just see people in chains and in bondage and, 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 and like a duct tape over their mouths. You, you just see them acting a acting like they're free, but they know that they're bound. Trying to smile like they're free, but they're bound. Our churches are full 
of this because they're not preaching that God came to set the captives free, the prisoners free. And they're not just pre not preaching it. They're not laying hands. They're not setting them free. I want to be in that church. I want to be in that community where every person in that church knows how to pray the prayer of faith, knows how to set the captive free, knows how to break the chains of people, knows how to bring deliverance to people, not because they have a title, but because they're a child of God. That's the community we're wanting to build. That's the people that we're wanting to, to, to we want to see Christ formed in God's people. Christ formed means uh, when you look at me, you're looking at Jesus. So that's blasphemy, brother. Really? He is the, we're going to do this until we get it. We are the, he is the, we are the, how many people do you see here? Oh, this is the new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. This, it's, we call it a new creature because it never existed until the first person was born again. Which means I'm attached to Jesus. I'm, I'm the body of Jesus. Mm. That means... That's why he's given us authority to do what the head wants us to do. He's given us his power to fulfill what the head is directing us to fulfill. We're not there and he's here. We are here and he's here. I in them and they in me. Remember that prayer? If any man be in Christ, we're vines Joined with the branches joined to the vine. One tree, not ten trees. What flows? The sap that flows through the vine flows into the branches. Same sap. We need to get all this limited stuff out of our heads and know that the same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus is flowing into you, is in you. Whew. Let's keep going. To preach aphesis, to, the, to preach freedom, loosing to the captives, to the prisoners, the recovering of sight, anavlepsis, the recovering of sight to the blind. This word recovering of sight in the Greek, uh, it means uh, um, a restoration of sight. A restoration of sight. For something to be restored, it means you could see, your seeing went not so good, and now he restores your sight. So that you can see like you should have seen or like you would have seen if your sight wasn't messed with in the first place. I want to share something with you that I had to, okay, I'm joking now, being facetious now. If you don't know what that means, you'll understand now. I had to forgive America. Because when I turned 40 years old in America, the writing began to get smaller and blurry. I'm sure it was in the water. I was so upset. Turned 40, I had 20-20 vision. All of a sudden, I'm looking at the TV, and I'm going, what's wrong with the TV? Why am I not seeing the numbers and the, the writing where it gives the news and stuff at the bottom? I was so upset, I had to forgive America. You know, sometimes we blame the wrong things on the wrong, or the right things on the wrong people. It's what happens when you turn 40-ish, which was only last year for me. Amen. But we're not, around about 40, it's almost like, 
I had my birthday the next day. Huh? What's going on? And then I realized it's not the water. It's not the TV. It's not Comcast. Comcast. It's something going on here. My body is heading in the other direction slowly. Amen? Look what happens. But when we put on glasses or we have LASIK or however, you, or God heals you, which I've seen, there's a restoration of sight. All of a sudden, you can see what you used to be able to see. That's what it means. Anavlepsis, watch this now, uh, uh, the recovering of sight to the blind. This word blind means mentally blind or physically blind. To flos in Greek. He's come to restore the sight of when. How many of you have said this? Man, if only I saw that. He's come to restore your ability to see that. To see it before it happens. To see it so that you can do what needs to be done to protect yourself, your family, your loved ones, your church, your friends. He's come to restore the sight of the blind. Here's the Greek word, apostello again, to set or to send, watch this, at liberty, aphesis, Greek word again, aphesis, it means, don't panic, these are all people that are getting baptized, they're just going to get changed. No one's leaving the church. They're not upset. I didn't preach anything they didn't like. They liked it. Amen. To preach liberty or freedom for them that are bruised. Say bruised. This word bruised in the Greek, thravo. It means those who were emotionally broken in pieces through that emotional situation, that abuse that abusive person, that abusive toxic relationship. I'm here to I'm I'm here to set at freedom those that have been abused, those that have been broken, those that have been shattered. Those who have been when somebody smites you through, when you've been slapped all the way through, boom. I remember when I did martial arts, we're doing a particular tournament, and uh, I'd just seen the movie. I know some of you have heard the story. I'll, I'll share, it, share it again because I know how much you enjoyed it the, the last five times. And I was fighting this black belt, and I just got my yellow belt. You say, how can they put a yellow belt against a black belt? You fight your weight. You don't fight your belt. It was the same weight as me. But I just saw Enter the Dragon. And in Enter the Dragon, uh, Bruce Lee standing. And from here, he's fighting a guy, not Bolo, the other guy. And from here, you don't even see it. You just, doof, he just, he just hits the guy. And the guy's like, and I thought, I'm going to do that. How many of you know that we go into relationships and situations well-meaning? And I thought I was so cool because I just got my yellow belt. It was so new. It was sticking up like this, you know. When a belt is hanging, means you, you've had it for a long time. But when, when it's new, it's kind of just, you know. And, and here I was. I was the expert. Four months I've been training, okay, as opposed to his four or five years. So I'm standing like this, and I'm waiting for the, for the moment. And all of a sudden... You know, like in, you've seen the movies? Tweet, 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 tweet. I'm literally seeing little birds. Tweet, tweet. I didn't even see him. He was so fast. He did to me what I wanted to do to him. All I remember was literally tweet, tweet. And I'm going, and the ref jumped in between. He says, you okay? I said, yeah. And I thought, okay. You're not going to do that again. Bruce Lee's back in action. 
So I get back into my stance. I'm ready to roll. Boom, he hits me again. Tweet, 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 tweet. Having said that, he won, he won that fight, right? So I go off and my teacher comes to me and he goes, what was that? I said, sensei, I saw Enter the Dragon and I saw Bruce Lee doing this. He says, you're not Bruce Lee. Do what I taught you. Okay. Anyway, I fight a guy. I beat him. The guy I beat, beat the black belt, which means I had to, play, I had to fight that black belt again to see now who's the winner. So they put now me to fight the original guy. And my stomach's turning, but I keep hearing my teacher say, do what I taught you, do what I taught you, do what I taught you. Oh, this is, a, this is an awesome lesson, isn't it, today? Do what I taught you. Forget about Bruce Lee. Okay, this time, I'm going to do what the teacher taught me. How many of us do this spiritually? We do our own thing. Because of a movie we saw, a person we met, somebody gave, a, gave me bad advice. How many of you notice the people with the most messed up lives give, gives the most advice? They always know how to live life, right? How many of you know the Bible says don't listen to that? Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So anyway, go back to the teacher. Go back to what, you, what you've been taught. So this time I'm standing there and I'm thinking, okay. So as he comes to do the same thing, he thought he's going to get me again. This time my teacher, thank God my teacher was gracious. He was, first, he, first I was like terrified. When he came and said, what was that? But then when I saw him say, do what I told you. Don't do anything else. This time I'm ready. And I keep hearing, do what I told you. Do what I told you. As he comes to pull the same little move, I block him. And I go in for the strike and I get the point. And he's shocked. And he's looking. And I was, I was so happy. I, was, I wasn't seeing little tweets and birds. I was, so, I was like, yes, I can do this. And I thought, okay, you, we can do it again. This time he comes, he comes in for, with a kick. I block the kick. He comes in with a, a, a first strike. I block the first strike. And again, I, I, I do a back first strike. And I got the point and I win the fight. All because I wasn't trying to be someone else. I wasn't going according to somebody else's experience. But I listened to my teacher. In our case, we listened to Jesus. Watch this now and I'm closing with this now. He's come to sit to send at freedom them that are bruised, uh, 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 shattered, smitten through, just like I was. I was smitten through. <laughs> he came to heal. Watch this. And then to preach, same Greek word, keruso, the acceptable, are you all ready for this? The acceptable year of the Lord. How many of us read acceptable year of the Lord? That's not what it says. The word acceptable is correct, the acceptable, dektos, it means approved, accepted. But this word year, it doesn't mean an exact one year. Because that's the Greek word chrono. Chronos. Have you how many of you have heard that word before? Chrono? That's a, that means a year. Chrono is one year, chronos. Uh, uh, like I would say, how many chrono are you? How old are you? How many years are you? And that's how I would ask your age. But here it says, the acceptable year, watch this, it means fixed period of time. It's a fixed period of time. So it may not be a year, but it's a fixed period of time. We're here to preach the acceptable fixed period of time of the Lord. You may close your Bibles. Do we understand that the anointing of God, you have an anointing from the Holy One of God, the Bible says. Say with me, I have an anointing. Again, say it with faith this time. Believe it. I have an anointing from the Holy One of God. Again, I have an anointing from the Holy One of God. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord 
Altogether, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, within me, for He has anointed me to preach, to, to break to pieces that which has been shattered in people's lives. To preach to the spiritually poor, the unsaved, the backslidden, the gospel, the good news. To destroy any and every bondage, even religious bondages. He has sent me, come on, say it and believe it. He he has sent me to heal, to cure to make whole those who have been devastated and crushed psychologically, emotionally to bring freedom to those who are imprisoned by demons, spirits, situations, words, curses or even the mistakes of the past. He has sent me to set them free he has sent me to bring a recovery of sight a restoration of sight to the blind the mentally blind the emotionally blind those without vision he has sent me to bring vision again to those without vision and to set at liberty to set to loose them that are broken and shattered physically, emotionally, psychologically and to preach that this is the approved and accepted time period of the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering this morning. This is that time. This is that time. This is that time for this church. This is that time for you. This is that time for your ministry. This is your time for your call, for that calling. Yes, there's things that we have to put aside. There's things we've got to put behind us. God is calling you to receive the anointing of God. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Are you ready to receive a fresh smearing of the anointing? I said a fresh smearing of the anointing. A fresh smearing of the anointing. Here we, here we go. We've got some olive oil. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! We're going we're gonna to minister here this morning. Amen. We're going to minister this morning. Oh, we worship you, Lord. This morning, we've got some people that are being baptized. One of the most powerful things that ever happened to me was when I came up out of the water. I experienced the power of God. I experienced Him, had an encounter with my Jesus. I was a nice Muslim boy before this. I was a good religious person. I was a good person. But I realized that without Jesus, there is no good. There is no good without Jesus. And so when I came up out of that water... The power of God shot through me like electricity. I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that this Jesus that these people are worshiping, this Jesus that these people hear from, this Jesus that these people tell me and and that I've seen the healings, He's real. He's going to be baptizing some people in a few moments' time. Amen. In case you're getting ready to spar anybody, you know. Nobody's being sparred with this morning except the devil. Amen. We, we're going to break the chains of the enemy. Say with me, Father, this morning, I receive your anointing. By faith now, I want you to receive that. Lord, I receive your anointing to preach the gospel. To the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. Those that have been shattered. Those who have been devastated. To bring freedom 
a loosing to those in jail and being held captive by the lies of the enemy to bring restoration of sight to those whose vision has been stolen I take back my vision come on say it say it with authority I take back my vision right now in Jesus name Lord I receive and I receive your anointing not just for myself but for others to bring healing and freedom and devastation to the works of the enemy of those that have been shattered crushed through the through the curses the lies past failures in the name of Jesus I receive that anointing and to preach that from today it's a new day it's a new beginning a new day a new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty myself and I receive to administer with power and authority to the poor in my community, in my city, in my state, in my nation, and in this world, in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands and let the anointing of God. Some of you are actually experiencing the Holy Spirit anointing you, smearing oil all over you some of you it's a renewing of the the old wine skin some of you it's a reaffirming of the call of God on your life some of you it's a breaking off of you the lies of the enemy that you're done you're too old you're too young you're too white you're too black you're too big you're too small all that's being broken off of you in Jesus name and the Lord is setting you free once again to fulfill the call, the, that, the, the reason, the purpose for the anointing upon your life right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Father, I just release restoration of vision back to your people. Restore vision, restore vision, restore vision, restore vision, restore vision, restore vision. In Jesus' name, restore vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore vision in Jesus' name. Woo, hallelujah. There's such a powerful anointing here this morning. For those of you watching online, God bless you. We're going to be baptizing some people. And we've had an awesome time of worship, power of God. The gifts of the Spirit were in operation and people were already touched there and we're going to continue laying hands on people because that's what we do. We lay hands. We, we're going to anoint people that are going to receive the fullness of the anointing upon their lives and receive the, the call to receive the empowerment, to receive the appointment into the, the office that God is calling them. We say, God bless you, those of you watching online. It's been great having you with us. If you're in the Jacksonville area, I want to encourage you to come. Come to church and receive. This is just a touch of all that happens here. Come, come. God is calling you. He's saying, come, come. Stop playing around. Stop making excuses. Stop uh, trying this, trying that. Come. This is where you need to be. You need to be where God is, where you're going to be fed, where you're going to drink, where, where, where the presence of the Lord is going to fall like rain, flow like a mighty river, and where you can feast.